In this problem, we need to express capital M in terms of M1 and M2 such that this capital M mass here is going to stay still. So these two can move, but this is going to have to stay still. So we can do this by establishing the equations of motion using by considering the force. So let's just say in this string over here, it has a tension of T. And then it's going to pull, uh, this tension here is going to pull this mass upwards. And then there's also going to be a gravitational force that's going to pull it downwards. So immediately we can set up an equation. So in this problem, I'm going to take downwards as positive. So if a, a force is positive, that means it's pulling, uh, it's pointing downwards. So we have mg, uh, this gravitational force that's pulling downwards, minus the tension that's pulling it upwards. And then since this is going to stay still, we get f equal to ma, so mass times acceleration, which is equal to zero, because it's, it is staying still. So we get mg minus t is equal to zero. So this is the first relationship we get. So we can also consider the tension within this string over here. So now we know that in this upward string, this string here at the top, it has a tension of t. And then it is going to be pulling this pulley over here upwards. And then for this other string over here, it is going to have another tension. Let's call it t1. And then it is going to pull this pulley downwards. And then you can see that because this force is acting on both sides, uh, the downward force exerted by this T1 uh, tension over here acting upon the pulley, there, it is, there is going to be a 2T1 amount of force that's going to be pulling this pulley downwards. And then there's also going to be a tension T that is going to be pulling this pulley upwards. And then because this pulley is massless, uh, these forces must balance each other out. So that means 2T1 must be equal to T. So these two T1 forces that's pulling it down must balance the T force that is pulling it up. So 2t1 must be equal to t. And then now we can use t1 to figure out the equations of motion for these two masses over here. So we do the same thing. We have this downward gravitational force, m1g, minus the tension that's pulling it upwards, t1. And this is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of this mass over here. So let's call it a. And then we can do the same thing for this other mass. So we have the gra downwards gravitational force minus the tension, and then we have m2 times its acceleration. So in this diagram over here, because this mass is staying still, if this mass is going to move, if this goes down, this is going to go up, and this is, if this goes down, this then this is going to go up. So that means that the acceleration of both of these masses, they're going to have the same magnitude, but the direction is going to be the opposite. So that means if the acceleration of m1 is equal to a, then this acceleration is equal to negative a. So now we have this set of equations that, that we can solve. So you can see that we have several unknowns. We have t, we have t1, we have a, and then we have capital M. So these are unknowns. So first of all, we can try to get rid of the, uh, one of these t's by using this relationship over here. So let's just say t, instead of writing t, we'll write this as 2t1. So second of all, let's try to get rid of the unknown a over here. So let's try to consider these two equations. So if we subtract these two equations with each other, on the left-hand side we have m1 minus m2g, and on the right-hand side we have m1 plus m2a. So you see the acceleration a is equal to m1 minus m2g divided by m1 plus m2. So you see that this actually makes perfect sense, because in our case, uh, a is the acceleration of this m1 over here. And this tells us that if m1 is heavier than m2, then there is going to be a positive, this A is going to be positive, that means this mass is going to go down, which is exactly what we would expect. If this is heavier, then this should go down. So that's just a bit of consistency check for this result over here. So using this result, we can try to derive what our capital M should be. So notice that for, a quick, for the equation that we have so far, we have this mg minus 2t1 is equal to 0, and then we have an m1g minus t1 is equal to m1a. So we can try to get rid of the t1 by multiplying both sides by 2 and then subtracting the two equations. So on the right hand side I have negative m1a. And now I can substitute the result that we just obtained. So the result that we obtained, a is just equal to m1 minus m2g divided by m1 plus m2. So now we can just do a bit of rearranging to arrive at our expression for capital M. So immediately we see that we can cancel out the g's from both sides. 
and now it's just simple algebra. So on the right hand, we just dump everything to the right hand side. We have 2m1 plus 2m1, m1 minus m2, m1 plus m2. So that should be a negative sign. So all we, all we have to do now is to simplify this expression. So you see we can pull the 2m1 out, and on the right hand side, inside the bracket we have m1 minus m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2. So this is just a simple subtraction of fractions. We have m1 plus m2 minus m1 plus m2 divided by m1 plus m2. And obviously these cancel out, so we have 2 and 2 in the denominator, in the numerator. And we can combine it with this 2m1, so we get 4m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2. So this would be our answer for capital M. So if capital M is equal to this expression over here, then for this setup over here, this mass is going to stay still.